Hi everybody, this is Coach Jay with Full Circle Coaching Consulting and I want to talk to you a little bit today about the uh, very, very in-depth marketing plan. So this is the Full Circle mar Marketing Plan, <clears throat> excuse me, and we call it hashtag bulletproof because if you have this in place and you follow this on a regular basis, your practice, your marketing plan, your clients, your the transitions from one phase of care to another, it will be bulletproof. So. Um, let's go down and look at the, a couple things here. So we've got the 2016 year in review. Um, we've got quarter four 2016 new clients. This is just a blank version, right? So this is likely the copy that will come into your inbox. You've got quarterly Q4 wellness tracking, and then you get ready for the next year also. So we always want to have, as I'm recording to 2017, I always want to have year you're working on and the year coming up in advance as well as the quarter that you're in and the quarter that's coming up. So with that in mind, let's look at the 2016 year in review. So this was 2016 and it's broken up into two things, internal marketing and external marketing. And you can see that up at the top here, external and internal. It just was too much for me when I was doing this by quarter. I wanted to see the one year flow. I really wanted to have an idea for my vacations, um, the different seasons, spring break, school being in and out, summer vacation. I really wanted to have an idea for these things and wanted to have this snapshot of one year. So that's why I did one year and not by quarters for the marketing plan. Um, oh, actually this looks like it says 2017 marketing overview. Again, this is a blank copy, not my working copy. So. January, we had an Oscar Blues, Blues, Lunch and Learn that we did. Um, so that was an external event. Yes or no, did we do it? Yes, we ended up doing the event with our specifics of it. Down below, you see the dinner with the docs. Did we do the dinner with the docs? Yes, we did. At the House of Q, what was the dates? Um, some of these we just kind of, again, went back and threw together. So the dates of the Oscar Blues, Lunch and Learn was January 16th. And you put that number in there. I always look at the new patient goal. What do you want to manifest out of it? We knew that the Oscar Blues Lunch and Learn was going to be small, so we had a goal of three. We attracted one. It cost me two hundred dollars in food. So here's the thing. <clears throat> this is the one variable in this spreadsheet. H four, the time cost. So your time doc is worth a lot more than twenty five dollars an hour, and we get that. How much is your CA's time worth? Let's say your CA that you have supporting you is worth $10 an hour, and you've got another CA there that's worth um, $7.50 an hour. 25 is just kind of a number that I use. Let's say that you want to say $75 an hour, all right? You want to include your time. Maybe your time's worth $150 an hour. CA's time's worth $100 an hour. You can kind of take the average of that. I use 25 because... If I have two CAs there, I've got one at $15 an hour, one at $10 an hour. And for me, I'm not actually tracking my time. I want to know what my average, my actual cost is. So again, when I'm doing this, the $25 an hour is not the value of my time. It's the value of the time for the people that I'm bringing with. And if I've got two people, a $10 an hour person and a $15 an hour person. So the lunch and learn, I ended up paying them for two and a half hours of time. Let's say I was there for four hours. That's going to change the spreadsheet. The cost per new patient lead. So what I'm doing is that adds up the cost of the event, $200, plus the, the new clients. The actual spread, the actual values are up in the column here. It's an, it's an if-then statement. So if F5 is zero, it's just going to give you a value of zero, right? Because you didn't check the new clients. So the cost for new patient lead actually would be like infinite, right? So we just call that zero. Otherwise, it's G5, which is your total cost. $200 in food, plus it's adding the time cost here, $25 an hour, times four hours, so that's 100. And then it's dividing by the actual number of new clients, which is one. So if I change this, you'll see if I, the actual new clients attracted were two, that's only going to cost me $150 an hour. Does that make sense? So let's go down to some, some ones that were really, really good. Uh, we did a founder group lunch and learn. Okay, We had a four patient, new patient goal. I think we actually got four new clients out of that one. Cost me $7 in food, 
two and a half hours of time times the twenty-five dollars. It's only going to cost me thirty-three dollars per lead for that event. So that would be a great event. Some of these events that are more expensive, like the Festival on Main here on forty-five. Yes, we did it. It was a Friday night thing on August twenty-sixth. We set a goal of six new clients, two manifested. The cost of it was six hundred dollars plus a booth. Plus we were there for ten hours. It was a long event. Um, times 25 so that's going to be $250 for those two new clients it cost me $425 a client so is that an event I'm going to do again the answer absolutely not scroll up to rhythm on the river here on number 40 row 40 is this something that we did this year the answer was no so here's what here's the way that this happened it was in the evenings now it used to be during the day this was a stat actually from the previous year. There was a $1,500 cost to, to pay for a booth. We were gonna be there for 10 hours. If we attracted five new clients, which normally isn't that bad, that's still $350 an hour. We made the decision by looking at this that we didn't wanna spend $350 per new client acquisition. Even though it's it's we look at each new client lead as $1,500, we knew that the quality of that event was gonna be decreasing by them moving it to the evenings. So that's why you keep notes. When you do this in 2617 for the current year, you'll see it basically we just cut and pasted it over. But you go ahead and you take the, pre the previous year's events and keep them all there. And what I recommend you doing is going through it once a year and just writing yes or no if you're going to do it. Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. So again, this is just a, a, a blank working copy. On the internal side, the things you can do, gift to help, New Year's resolution dinner. Some of these things, like in my office, the dinner with the docs here, this is going to be an internal and an external event because we're going to be, in, be inviting our current clients as well as clients from the, the outside world, whether we're attracting them through fish bowls or um, ads or Facebook ads. There's a couple different ways that we attract new clients. Um, we, do, we do random events where we collect emails. That's also a way that we get external people at our dinner talks. So th some of these are hybrid events. Um, Boulder County Home Show, 100% an external marketing screening event. That's something that we usually do. Um, and that's a three-day event. So this is how this, this, this marketing plan works. 10 new clients was the goal. If we, we usually attract 10 new clients at that event. Cost the event $600. $60, if you're spending 60 hours, which that seems like a high number, uh, probably more like 20, $110 a new patient lead. Hey, and, and those are usually really good new clients, qualified home clients at home shows. That's definitely something that we keep doing. So that's how the marketing overview works. So once you attract new clients, we drop them into the, now this is broken up by quarter. So let's get over to the name side here. <clears throat> October of 2016, new client came in. The name was Ben Barrel, Amanda Hug and Kiss, Tina Alcott. Obviously, these are not real names. Amanda Hug and Kiss is um, <laughs> just a human. So this is the date of the new patient exam when they came in. You can ha create columns here, like column C here is the info entered and a thank you sent. That's just a, a check for my staff because my staff is putting this um, – putting the client's names in here. This isn't something that I do. It's something my staff does. So did you enter their name into our email drip system? That That's what info entered means. For somebody who's an internal referral, has the thank you card been sent? That's just a reminder for them. So so how did Amanda Hug and Kiss came to the office? They came through a um, an internal referral. And the thanks goes to ben, ben Dover. Thank you, Ben Dover, for sending Amanda Hug and Kiss. And what was the day of the report of findings? I want to track that also. Occasionally, very, very rarely, a client won't come in. Um, if a client is not coming for the report of findings, for whatever reason, I want to know why. Usually, it's the quality of the lead that's not coming in. So if the, if the answer here is no, I want to know the source that they're coming in from because usually it's the source or the event that they're coming in from that's not high quality, that's usually not bringing a high quality patient. Does that make sense? So you can add your new client here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, we'll just put my name in, Jay Brightlow. New patient exam was October uh, 25. Was the influenter? Hopefully it was. Let's say it came in by way of um, 
Facebook, Yelp, other online source. So let's talk about the, the referral sources that we commonly see and use. Family referral letter, this is something that actually is done right away. New client comes in, they've got the report of findings, and the we've got a little family referral letter that we sign right away at the report of findings after we're convinced that this was a new client and we'd also want to attract their family. Make sure you have a place where you look and see, are they married, do they have kids? Somebody who's divorced, you're probably not going to want to send them a family referral letter to have their spouse come in. If they've got children who are deceased, uh, again, I'm, I, I have learned from this mistake. I, hey, we send a family referral request to everyone. Somebody actually sent me a note that said, you know, my husband just died, and, and I knew that, right? And I just didn't have the, I just didn't think it all the way through. So really think through if you're going to send a family referral letter home. Um, avoid some uncomfortable conversations. Google, Google gets its own. Google's its own beast. We should have an entire video on Google. Facebook, Yelp. Facebook is an okay source, not an awesome source. Yelp is an okay source, not an awesome source, but we do attract people there. There's a bunch of other online things like City Search and I don't know, maybe you're doing something with Kijiji or Craigslist. Um, so Facebook, Yelp, other online source. Screening event, this is just your external screening event. <coughs> Mailers, flyers, we usually don't do <clears throat> excuse me, mailers or flyers in our office, um, but it's there. Internal referral in our office, if, you, if I pulled mine up, internal referral, generally speaking, is 50% of our new clients. So you'll see lots of ones going in this column. And I'm just putting ones in right now because check out what's happening down below. This number, it's adding things up and you'll see the heat sheets changing. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Speaking engagements. Hey, let's say um, I went and did a screening event, I'm sorry, a, uh, a speaking engagement, and I got a bunch of people to come in. Um, I'm just putting a four in so you can see how the heat sheet down below here is changing. So this just makes your tracking easier. We'll talk about how to edit that in a moment. Walk-in, we get almost no walk-ins. Other. If it's an other, there are just random ways that people sometimes find us. Um, and so a couple in particular, we, do, um, we don't do print advertising, but if we did a, a fundraiser of some sort, we were sponsored for a fundraiser, my logo was somewhere, maybe somebody said logo. I, we do silent auctions in our office uh, where charities have um, events that they've got going on and they've got silent auctions. So we'll usually donate a week of, a quote unquote, week of free chiropractic care. That would be an other. So comment on the referral source. If you get one in other, Let's say one came in other here, and you, I would write um, in the in between week of care. Tina Alcott came in by a bend uh, by by way of bend uh, bend over sent in Tina and Amanda hug and kiss. We really want to make sure that we are thanking Bend Over. Uh, ben Barrel, Ben Barrel came in by way of Google here. So found online. I want. I would like a comment and referral source for every person, and that should also be in your um, online tra in your tracking system for your office, also in your software. Okay, so let's talk about this little heat sheet here. As the numbers come in, again, I just kind of threw some garbage numbers in here. You can change this. You can change these numbers because over the court of a, over the course of an entire quarter, October, November, and then you'll actually want to create a. Um, you want to cut and paste. A line here for December. Oops, you get the idea. As your new clients add up, we generally are 30 to 45 new clients. So we've got this set up for once we hit 10, we start seeing a nice color scheme developing in through here. So 40 new clients here, 40 new clients here, 40 new clients here. Um, things that are red are things that we're just not going to put a lot of energy into. Things that start to become green, I'm just going to throw some numbers in here. You can see it becomes a bright green. Internal referral, we're going to make sure we're really, really asking our, our current clients for um, sending in new clients. So the way to, to fix this, to change these conditions, go ahead and just select all the things on the bottom here. And you'll see over in the corner here, this is already set up for you, it says color scale. Midpoint, what's the number? We, we want our number for midpoint. Number for midpoint, number for midpoint. If we hit 20, things go green. 10, things go yellow. Zero, things are at red. 
and you can change that midpoint to be, let's say, 5, and we can change this to, say, 15. And if I change that, you'll see these things start to change their gradient here. Let's say I want to change this midpoint to uh, 13, and I want to change the max set point to 30. You'll see how the, the colors change down here. Pretty cool, huh? The way to find this, if this is not up for you, it's under, in Google Drive, it's under Format, and it's called Conditional Formatting. Once you click the Conditional Formatting, with your cells highlighted, this little thing will come up here and you can change it. Pretty cool. You can also change the colors. So if you want to go to a different color scheme, you can pick a different color scheme here, whites and yellows, or uh, there's a whole bunch. You cl just click Custom Color Scale. Um, so you can totally change the colors. You can go with single colors. So pretty cool thing. All right, <clears throat> continuing forward. As we move to the right, we've got different packages in our office. I also want to track what type of client was Ben Barrel. We see a package A, which is our acute care plan, B, which is the midpoint, or C, our corrective plan, or he brings the entire family in, and then they're under a family unlimited plan. Those are the four things that I consider quote unquote wins when a new client comes in. So the heat sheet here will highlight those for us. Again, it's going to give us me an idea of where are people coming in. Select these four. And you go over here and you can, again, change your set point and midpoint stuff, your, your mid set point and midpoint colors here. Other options, hey, they're not a great client. They just want a little bit of relief care. That does happen. Maybe that's pay as you go. To me, that's, that, that's not a winning client. Um, if they go to wellness, sometimes people actually come into your office from, let's say, I, I live in Colorado. Let's say they came in from Portland um, and they're already under chiropractic care. They're not a candidate for... Um, intense care. They just want to continue the care that they've had. Um, maybe they just drop right into a wellness plan. Or they're doing something else. Maybe they've got insurance that covers 20 visits and they just want to do 20 visits. Um, for us, an other that would, could be considered a win would be um, a, a car accident case. Someone comes in with a car accident, they've got a specific amount of visits to use, we can put that in there. Or maybe you want to create a column for um, car accidents also. Just select this entire column insert one left and you can put car accident and you can make that part of your it says apply to range so you can make that a part of your range here instead of ending on R you can have it end now on S and that should change this color here also oops Oh, it looks like it's already part of the color scheme there. So that is the, I'm going to put that back actually. Really easy to just undo things that you do over here. Have fun playing with this. Your coach can help you with these, with these questions, the nuances of this document. It's a really, really awesome document. Um, once somebody goes through an intensive phase of care, they may have a transition. We actually want to track how many people are coming in with transitions. The only time someone's going to get a transition in our office is if they go through one of these types of care and then they'll go in there and then comments just any comments about the plan that they selected. Okay, wellness tracking. Let's say somebody, this is how, again, how we use this. Ben Barrel comes in our office. He was in acute care plan. He went through his 13 visits. He went through his transition. And then we go and we put him into wellness tracking. So we are going to put Ben Barrel in here. Let's say he was probably going to be a transition in November. Ben Barrel comes in. The date of transition was November, let's say, 20th. Did he continue? Yes or no? Yes, he did. We like that guy. Did he do weekly? Did he do every other week? Did he decide, hey, I really like this now. I want to bring my kids in. No, no, there's no issue with my kids, so I want to put my kids in. Or did he decide, yeah, I'm really good. I'm good where I'm at. The finances are an issue. Um, got a bunch of stress at work which clearly the guy would be a candidate for continuing chiropractic care. Maybe he goes to pay as you go. If he did a, let's say, an every other week plan, the date of expiration, it's one year, so that's going to likely expire November 19th of 
this is 2016, so that would be 2017. You can also track, is it a one year plan? Is it a one month plan? Payment type, did he pay in full? Did he have a monthly debit? Did he have quarterly? It depends on what your options for your, your office is. What's the total cost, total value of his plan? Let's say he did a um, an every other week, one month. I believe the cost for that plan in our office is somewhere around $990. Um, and there are any comments. Credit card on file. Uh, looking at somebody up here, credit card on file, move to Cabo. Um, maybe that's just, no, no, that was actually, I think that was a legitimate client way back in the day. Uh, one of our clients did actually move down to Cabo. So that is the way this document works. Same thing as before, the heat sheet will start adding up. One year plan, six month plan, what are your best sellers, your weekly, your every other week, your family plans. It's going to add this up. These are considered wins for me. Pay as you go is not. So that's how we go from cultivating a client to them being in your office to tracking how they move through your office to tracking to a wellness client's usually an easy client. A couple of the nuances, the conversion percentage, this will give you, uh, it will add up the total number of conversions. So this should be um, in I, here, total plan sold. Total plan sold is one because it's adding up one year, six months. Let's throw in a couple more variables here. So I've sold a total of two plan, three plans, and that should be giving me a conversion of total people. Oh, what this should be doing is adding up the total number of clients in here divided by the total number of people who are in the office. So it should be total number of plans sold divided by, we're just, you're gonna have to take this number here and, and put that manually. So 56, let's make it five. So I've got a 60% conversion rate. So let's say that it came in and had client A, B, C, and D. So I've got five total clients in the system. Went into, let's make this legitimate. We've got a one year plan, a one month plan, a one year plan. So we have four new, so we have four plans total. This person, let's say they did pay as you go. So we have one, two, three, four, five total clients in. The total plan sold was four. The conversion total, I just again I put it into five up here. So you just you have to add your total clients up to that, but it does give you a cool conversion percentage. And that should be happening over here also. Total number of Q4 leads 29. Because I didn't totally put the numbers in here, let's say I put in, let's just put in 20 here. So you see the total plan sold is 22, the total leads 29. I've got a 75% conversion. These are numbers that you want to know. So definitely an in-depth spreadsheet. As you're working through 2016, here's 2017. Do be planning your next year in advance. And then you've got your next quarter for tracking. There are other tabs in here that you can use if you don't love these. Um, if you want to do a total number of hours that you're spending on something, we've got the Q1 hours. Um, your return on your investment is here. And then if you decide that you don't like the one-year marketing grid, you can do a quarterly marketing grid. I, I, I just, I never liked the quarterly. I always liked the one-year. So a very, very in-depth, very, very in-depth marketing plan, very in-depth way to gauge the health of your office. Um, and I wish that the wellness tracking was a little bit easier to add up the total number of clients. And that's kind of the only thing that I'm looking to saying. I wish I had kind of set this up a little bit different. Likely by the time this comes to your inbox, this will be a better version than it is now. Okay. I don't think there's anything left for me to cover. Marketing overview. Oh, yeah, let's cover this. At the bottom of the marketing overview, the total goal for new clients for the entirety of the year 
you can actually see the total number of new clients, the total cost spent on marketing. That includes the this this is just the cost of what you're spending. It's not taking into account the time. You can actually go ahead and you can actually see the total number of time. This is saying dollars. We can actually say this is give me the wrong format format number and we just want to call that plain text 166.5 hours of marketing if you're at $25 an hour you could actually take this and you can say equals 25 times oops times this number 4160 $4,160.50 cents would have been spent in marketing for the year number Take that number and we can make it financial. Let's open up that box a bit so you can actually see it. It'll actually also, this is set up to calculate, I'll make this one a little bit bigger, your ROI, we call it ROI, but really it's your cost per new patient lead, but it gives you idea on your, your ROI. It's, aver it's taking up all your events and mark and dividing it by so it's taking i5 so it's summing up the to all the co it's not a great number but it would be summing up the entirety that you're spending on your new client average you would actually want to take this number and divide it by what we should do we should take this number and divide by new patients so according to this the total number is 27 44 for your new client average, but it's, it's a skewed number because there's all these zeros in here. So you're not getting a totally awesome number with that. Um, that's probably the least productive number of all the totals at the bottom here. Okay, this is Coach Jay from Full Circle Coaching Consulting. I think I've actually covered everything now. Have a great day, everyone.